Well, the Hubbard Glacier earthquake, the magnitude 7 earthquake that moved the ground, or I have to say displaced the ground by seven feet, like two meters, two large steps, like strike slip, like the San Andreas Fault. Queen Charlotte Fault in the area, Fairweather Fault in the area, but this area seems like a connector fault or something, it's not really exactly known, but it was right underneath the Hubbard Glacier and it has done way more damage. So it seems like we have over 700 landslides and snow avalanches that have happened and some of them are significant. And the thing is, since everything is covered with ice, we can't really see whether this strike slip event has opened a large crack in the ground. So now the scientists need to watch the ice there very, very closely if some cuts are open. And the Hubbard Glacier is in the San Elias Mountains in Alaska. That's roughly 55 miles or 89 miles north of Yakutat in Alaska. And that it happened on December 6th, but it takes a while to really assess the damage in this area. And I want to um, show you this satellite image that was taken on December 11th. It's basically a satellite image of Yakutat. So the quake has triggered, how we can call it, widespread ground failures. And by the way, if you want to know chronologically what happened, I'll put the videos in the end screen. And guys, if you could give this video an early like and press that hype button, this would really help my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. So thank you so much for doing that. So the largest and most concentrated slope failures, avalanches and rock slides and mountain slides um, occurred within like a 10 mile radius. That's roughly 16 kilometers. Um, along this estimated fault rupture. They can only estimate right now, but guys, 700 landslides and avalanches. I mean, it was a magnitude seven and the aftershocks kept coming and they still keep coming. I have some viewers that live in the area and they asked me, give us updates. We're quite far away, but we felt the shaking. So the epicenter of the magnitude 7.0 struck roughly 10 kilometers, that's six miles below that Hubbard Glacier. It is a mountain, a glacier. And the USGS has released reports that the ground failure probabilities were high across a broad zone north of Yakutat. But we're, we're slowly, day after day, we're, we're getting a broader picture. And that's why I'm giving you this update today. So... Already, instantly, they did a preliminary remote sensing assessment and that confirmed that the event triggered extensive landslides and snow avalanches on both sides of the Alaska and the Canada border. So this was affecting not only the U.S. and Alaska, it was also affecting Canada. And the problem is when they wanted to take satellite images to figure out what's going on, there was persistent cloud cover that was causing a problem and of course right now the limited daylight. So the optical satellite imagery was um, initially ineffective and this is a very like cold snowy uh, not so friendly area in, at this time. So you don't want to you know it's it's difficult. I don't want to say you don't want to but and they did but it's difficult to right away send out teams to take pictures and you have to be very very careful because the snow could cover some high instability areas. So since that was such a problem with the satellite image, the USGS has used synthetic aperture radar. It's called SAR. -S -A -R. The aperture radar change detection map, um, to be more precise, to uh, surface disturbances. And this is how we came to that map. map. So the, the orange star, that's the epicenter. And then you can see the landslide probability. The darker, the more violet, the, the higher the landslide probability. And the red areas is the probable larger landslide areas. And you can also see on the left here the study area. That is the red, um, the red rectangle. And what you also see here on the map with all the dots, you see the epicenter. And then you see the dots, you see the, the locations of the landslides that they have mapped when they were using the synthetic aperture radar change detection. 
So that's a lot. This is really a lot. And can that be precise? That is the question. We also have some images of how these landslides looked. I showed you some in my last video. So I'll show the images while I explain a little bit more what this SAR does. So it's an active remote sensing technology, basically that transmits microwave pulses and then records their reflections from the surface. So that generates data collection even during cloudy or nighttime uh, conditions. And then they compare like pre and post event SAR backscatter data um, they can identify the problems and the USGS has identified areas where these changes in surface roughness indicated potential mass movements such as landslides or avalanches and some of them have been confirmed with photographs by now. But we have continuous snowfall that makes that harder, right? This is a snowy and, and very mountainous terrain, which you see here on the next image that was taken on um, December 9th, shortly after the earthquake, right? We have th through snowfall, we have surface moisture change, we have glacier motion, we have avalanching. This can alter surface roughness. So we need to differentiate between earthquake induced failures and effects um, and some that are not caused by the earthquake. So that's why in this image, what you see is you see basically the SAR data that USGS has received, and then they have placed them on a topographic map so that you can see, okay, is this an elevator? Is this a mountain? This could be a landslide. Um, matched with regional information that was available. Also here, the color points is a preliminary mapping of potential mass movements. Where they place the dots, they place them at the highest elevation of that area where they think that is likely the location where the deposits were and where they're then sliding down in rock slides or avalanches. And this analysis has revealed that there are over 700 probable slope failures in connection with this Hubbard Glacier earthquake with the highest density concentrated along this 10 miles area, 16 kilometers, um, this wide zone that extends probably 30 miles, that's roughly 48 kilometers, uh, to the northwest of the epicenter. And we have 21 large landslides that show deposits as long as two kilometers, 1.2 miles. So a lot of stuff was coming down in really and covering a long area. Some could be snow avalanches and not like rock slides or mountain failure, but the surface roughness and the morphology suggest that these have been landslides on glacier surfaces. And then we have 500 smaller failures that are typically between 90 meters and two kilometers. So between 300 feet and 1.2 miles, but still big. Um, so in length, of course, right? How they came down. And uh, they were mapped across the broader region around the epicenter. And then we have another 200 zones that showed roughness changes consistent with downslope movement, but they really lacked a clear the positional morphology, so it was not sure was that really something that was caused by the earthquake. Several of these features were seen on glacier ice and, and they may include glacier surface deformation or snow avalanches. And so you see here a Landsat image where you can see the glacier and the mountains. And this is from December 10th. And there you can see the landslides that have been triggered, right? You can see here where the red dots is. You can see how it got down, how it gets dark. And you can see the, the, the tongues of these landslides. Basically, this is the most of this area is Mount King George. Some of the largest slides um, were occurring on the flanks of Mount Logan. That is in Canada. That's actually Canada's highest peak. Did you know that? Um, so preliminary measurements indicate that numerous large landslides may have actually traveled more than six kilometers, 3.5 miles. That is long. That is really, really long. And 
we have Landsat 9 imageries that have confirmed that landslides deposits are present and that they contain of variable mixtures, rock, snow, and ice. So rocks are part of these landslides. And then of course, as it snows, these deposits are quickly covered with snow. But this shows you, even if it's a more remote area where we had this strong earthquake, it has done quite a bit and probably more underneath the surface. So thanks for watching this. I'll put the other videos here where you can see more about that in the end screen. And if you wanna learn more about what's going on in warmer regions, they discovered something very mysterious in the Bermuda Triangle, and it's not the normal mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. They found a structure beneath Bermuda that changes everything. It's very, very interesting. The videos here in the end screen Three Eye Atlas still captivating playlist is in the end screen. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hype, subscribe, and I hope to see you here in the next one in a second. Bye bye.